Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and you're very welcome to a new mini series on my channel and this series is a year in the life of a border. So I've chosen a particular border in my garden and each month I'm going to come along and we're going to have a look at what's in flower, what's looking good in the border, the tasks that need to be done in that particular border in that month and just generally follow it through the months of the year. So it's January now and we're kicking off and <laughs> the border we're going to start with is actually here behind me. So you'll see that there's a fantastic Daphne Vloa in full flower behind me. It's called Jacqueline Postel and the scent is just amazing. But that's the best thing in the border at the moment because remember it's January. Everything is still asleep. Okay, let's have a look at the border. And here it is, my greenhouse border, looking very sad and sorry for itself at the moment. And in fact, everything looks a little bit dead, but it's not dead at all. And that's the way that winter is for everybody in the temperate zone. So everything goes dead and dies down, except for bushes and trees. And spring is a great time of rejuvenation. So today what I'm going to do is cut back the dead perennials and weed. And it's going to look a whole lot better very quickly. It won't look green and lush, but at least it'll look neat and we'll know where spring is coming from. And as you can see, the grasses are still looking good, if a little bit brown at this stage in the game. But if we look onto the ground, you can see that there's a lot of debris. This is perennials that have died back and are just lying there and of course there are weeds and moss and other things that need cutting back like this tall eupatorium but the thing that springs immediately into my vision is the sylphium over there that is looking a bit like a car crash at the moment and you can see that I have a support there that was being used to support it when it was green and lush and now we are going to just cut it back. So the first thing really is to just cut back all of these perennials here. Not the evergreen things like the Echium or the Melanosalinum over here or this plant, but the stuff that's visibly dead. Now I'm just going to dismantle this frame that is serving no purpose at the moment and we will need to put it out again a bit later on. So these are things are so so handy and um, you know you could never have too many of them. <laughs> And we have some upturned pots here. And what are these, you may ask? Well, these were just a little bit of protection for eucamus, which you can't see now because they've actually gone dormant at the moment. Now, in a warmer climate, they'll actually be evergreen, but here they do go asleep. And the pot just gives them a little bit extra protection. And now we are finished, cut back all the perennials, but the work isn't over yet because the next step is to take up the weeds, take up the dead leaves and expose the beautiful, glorious, hummusy soil that's going to help our plants grow for the coming year.
and this is what I'm presented with. So now the next step is to remove the leaves and I have a trug here which I'm going to use for anything that's compostable that I take off the garden and that's any leaves of perennials, stems, anything like that. So I'm just going to lift these up here. Bits of stick here that <laughs> kind of disintegrated through their own devices. Lots of leaves and as you can see there's lots of new stuff emerging which is great and what I'm also going to do is to remove the weeds and put them in a separate trug. So you see there's a lot of stuff here. So I wonder can you see that just here? So this is a kind of thistly weed I'm going to dig out and that's definitely not going on the compost that's going into the other trug and then likewise with these ones here. Now this is quite a difficult job because there's a big area to cover so what I like to do is to use my little rake here and just fluff up the earth but you have to be very careful that you know what's underneath before you do this because you don't want to damage any emerging plants so it needs to be some a border you've planted yourself and that you are familiar with and spring bulbs are the worst because <laughs> you don't see them until they're too late till it's too late Now, when you're weeding, look out for little gems like this. Now, do you know what this is? It's a runner from the Daphne you saw me in front of at the very beginning of the video. Daphne Jacqueline Postel. So this is precious. It's in the wrong place, but it is precious. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig it up and I'm going to pot it up and put it somewhere else. And here we are. This border is all finished, all weeded. It just needs a top dressing of mulch if I can afford it this year. I'll have to count my pennies. And just to give you a little bit of background, this border is 11 years old. Having said that, the border contained exclusively annuals for the first three or four years. So this was a large border that I populated each year with annuals I grew from seed and had great fun playing with that. So it was several years later that it was permanently planted up. But it's a very important border for me because it's right beside the greenhouse. And that means that I pass it by every time I go out to tend to the greenhouse. So if it's in a dire state, if it's messy, then it really annoys me. I suppose the plant that really cries out for attention at this time of year in January is this fantastic New Zealand wind grass and the weather has been obliging and given us just a little bit of wind here for me to film it. Now this is a fantastic grass that well it looks great all year round. It likes full sun and a well-drained soil like most grasses but it's a bit more tolerant than many. I've had this one for seven years in this border and I can tell you it never seeds about in a weedy kind of way. Now what I really love about this grass is the tactile seed heads that it produces. So you can see in spring they just kind of comb off and they often sit on top of the grass in just a golden cloud and little things are poking up here all over the place. Those noses there are a euphorbia, fire glow it's called, and it has the most beautiful orange flowers. But it is a bit of a thug, it does get about. And if you look around, you can see that it kind of runs. Also showing its face at the moment is this Australian white iris. 
Now this is Diplerina and one I've grown in the border for five years and it seems quite hardy for me. As you can see it's an evergreen plant with these kind of strappy monocot leaves that persist through the winter and it produces the most beautiful white butterfly like flowers at some stage during the year but we'll come across them very soon and in terms of maintenance now in January the main thing is to just to remove the dead brown leaves which is easily done when you do that it doesn't pull out a whole great chunk of the plant as happens with some other monocot plants and we have Milano Salinum decipiens which seeds about in my garden and I've chosen to leave this particular one here in situ now this will produce lovely umbels of pink flowers later on but I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this plant because I've covered it quite extensively in one of the episodes of my month of perennials it does have a lovely trunk though and we have this evergreen Salmesia looking quite perky at the moment now later in the season this will produce white daisy like flowers beside the Salmesia we have Leucanthemum Broadway Lights I think that's the name of this particular cultivar anyway I love it it's my favorite and it's just waking up now and just across from the Leucanthemum we can see that this Hemericalis is just beginning to wake up now and this is possibly my favourite day lily. It's called Golden Zebra and perhaps you can see already why it's called that. It's because it has the most beautiful golden variegated leaves. I can't wait to see these popping up in just a very short time. This billowy clump here is a Watsonia, so a South African bulb that does quite well for me. Now it's a no ID, I don't have a name for it, but it has pale pink flowers and they're really welcome in summer in this border. Now over here, right beside the greenhouse step, we have these kind of mounds of brown leaves and what they are are Babiana sticta. So a South African bulb that I get away with growing outdoors and I guess it's just a really sheltered position right up against the greenhouse. But at this stage I'm not going to cut back the brown leaves, I'm just going to leave them on just to afford the bulbs that little bit more protection. I mean, you know, it's January now, the end of January, we could well have many frosts and snows before we get into spring properly. But the plant that really sings in my border at the moment is this amazing Daphne Jacqueline Postel. And it is covered in these fabulous scented flowers. The scent is just divine. I love it to bits. And look how fabulous the flowers are. And this plant is absolutely covered. And of course it's just wonderful to have something scented right by the greenhouse door. So I get that sweet waft coming to me over the air as I go into the greenhouse and it just puts me in a great mood. Beautiful, beautiful Daphne. So sweetly scented. Actually I can't say enough great things about her. And she started to run for me a bit as well which is just great because it means more plants. So I guess that's it for the greenhouse border in January. I hope you enjoyed this first episode in my mini series, A Year in the Life of a Border. And I hope you'll check back in February to see how the border is doing then. We should see a lot of growth by then and a lot of things bursting into life. Thanks for watching. Bye.